Hello everyone. So I thought we would switch gears a little bit tonight. Um, I felt like doing some JavaScript and some like logical programming instead of semantic HTML, 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 or styling CSS. Um, this is really the kind of programming I prefer to do. So I thought I would show you all how to make a uh, palindrome checker, which is uh, one of the JavaScript projects on Free Code Camp. Um, I've already done this, so it, I won't have to necessarily figure out how to do it. It's just showing you all my solution to the problem, and uh, kind of showing my process as well as I've been helping y'all think about these problems in a different way. So what we got here is uh, on this side, Free Code Camp gives us the problem, which is return true if the given string is a palindrome, otherwise return false. Um, if you don't know, a palindrome is a word or a sentence that's spelled the same way both forward and backwards. Um, in this case, they want us to ignore punctuation, case, and spacing. So that's going to be important later. Uh, down here, they give you some little tip notes, which is actually really handy for them to be this specific. But uh, you'll need to remove all alpha or all non-alphanumeric characters, uh, things we just mentioned, punctuation, space, or symbols, and uh, turn everything into the same case. That way, um, the program won't say that it's not if it's a casing issue, like down here uh, for race car. Th this is a palindrome even though the casing's different, but th this won't equal this in uh, JavaScript because what, what it compiles down to on the lower level of, uh, yeah, the lower level programming, uh, basically the lowercase c and the capital C are represented differently in binary and probably assembly language as well, now that I think about it. But anyway, so over here in our code, let's get started. Um, the first thing I like to do is try to set myself up with things I'll need. So we're going to say let, which is uh, how you define a variable that will change um, in JavaScript. So we're going to say let letters, and that's just going to be an empty array because we're going to want that array later, but we don't need anything in it right now. So next we're going to say let regex equals regular expression. Um, if you don't know what regular expressions are, it's um, it's an advanced enough topic that I'm eventually going to do a whole video dedicated to just that. It took me a while to kind of get the hang of it, and I, I still want to practice more with it. But for right now, all you really need to know is it's a way of looking for characters uh, and it can either be to match characters, replace characters, um, you know, does this contain this, does this not contain this, the, the, those types of things. But uh, without going into too much on what this means, we're going to basically want anything that's not those, and then we want that to be global. It's supposed to be a comma instead of a period. That's why I was getting pretty crazy down there. So that's going to be our regular expression. Uh, the global tag that lets it, you know, run throughout the string. Okay. So now let's get into the real programming. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I When I did this the first time, I usually, it's a habit I want to change, but I typically go through, make the code, and then I go back and comment it. Um, this is how I eventually want to get to where I'm writing code the way I'm showing you here. Which I'm going to start with the comment. And what we're going to want to do is remove special characters. Um, like spaces and punctuation. Um, actually, I'm also going to get rid of the capitalization in this little block as well. Um, and since, since I know a lot of my channel is targeted to beginners, um, 
the dash dash is how you make a comment in code. Comments in code is basically where you can type in information that you want other developers to have access to, so that way you can explain your code and stuff like that. It, it's not read by the computer, basically, is what a comment is. So as you can see up here, when we define the function, we're expecting it to be given uh, str or string. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take str and it's going to equal str dot replace. And use the replace method, which does exactly what it says. It replaces parts of a string. And then, so we're going to use our regex variable. Um, so we're going to replace anything that's not a through z and 0 through 9. And we're just going to replace that with nothing. We're going to close that up. If I did that, then it would replace it with a white space, which is defeating the purpose. So that takes care of that. And now once the string equals itself minus all the extra stuff we don't want, we're going to say str equals str dot. You could do this either way. It doesn't matter. You could do uppercase or lowercase. I just prefer to do to lowercase, which is a, another JavaScript method for strings. And it's also named incredibly well. It takes the string and makes it lowercase. So after that, what we want to do is we're going to create an array of letters. And in this array, <coughs> what we're going to do uh, is make a for loop. And we're going to let i equal 0, i is less than str.length, i plus plus, and boom. It's the basic setup of our for loop. We want it to cycle through the length of the string. Um, let's see here. And we're going to do letters dot push. str i. Okay, let me break this down for you. So we've got our letters variable, which is the empty array we defined at the beginning. And what push does is that adds to the end of the array. So it pushes it in to the array. Um, the bracket notation here where we put i, that's how you reference the index of an array. And strings, luckily for this project, strings can be considered an array of characters. So this works, and what it does is um, for each cycle through the loop, we're going to add the letter of the index i. So it starts at 0, that would be the first letter of the string. The next loop, it'll be 1, that would be the second letter of the string, and then 2, which would be the third letter of the string, and so on and so forth, until we get to the end of the string length. Um, Next is uh, where we want to reverse the letters. And uh, we'll go ahead and comment this as one and join them to string. So for that, now that we've got all that set up, we've got letters and we're gonna do dot join. And what that does is it takes the array and it pushes, uh, no, sorry. I want to reverse it first. I'm getting ahead of myself. Letters dot reverse. There we go. That <laughs> that one once again very simple. It reverses the array, so it just flips it on its head. Now, what we want to do is we're going to want to create a new string. This new string is going to equal before I mess up letters plural. It's going to equal letters dot join and what join does is it it basically puts together all the indexes of an array and inside the parentheses for join you can basically put what you want to be the the conjoining thing like if I want it all hyphenated basically I could do that but we don't want it hyphenated we're just going to we're going to do that so that way it pushes it all together back into a single word no spaces none of that stuff and uh this this makes sense more with like the letter i or the letter the, the word i here but even uh let's see here down here with like not a palindrome we're going to want to push all of that together for comparison purposes uh 
depending on how this is this is gonna be a rather short video I might take this code put it into web uh, replit and then kind of console log some things so y'all can see each step of this after we uh, build it okay so next after we've reversed the array we've put the array back together into the new string so the new string is now the original string backwards so from there it's just a simple comparison right so we're going to check if the new string is the same as the first string that we were given to know if it's a palindrome. So this is as simple as if str triple equals new str. Uh, the triple equals, that's a uh, hard comparison. That means that these are exactly the same, basically. Um, there is a double equals in JavaScript, but that can that can be a little trickier because that can relate to data types as opposed to like a strict kind of comparison. But we'll get well. I'm, like I said, I'll make I'll make any other videos. Anything y'all have questions about, like I said, you can always leave them in the comments and I'll I'll answer them and stuff. But if they do equal, then our goal was to return true, and then else we're going to return false. And then I can take this out. And then uh, let's run some tests. And we have a palindrome checker. Look at that. Not too bad. So I'm going to take all this. I'm going to copy it. So that really didn't take long at all. So I'm just going to break it down a little more visually for you real quick. And then we'll be done. Get in here. I don't care what it's called. So we're going to paste all that so if you don't if you don't know what Replit is it's amazing because you can just type in some JavaScript over here and then it'll you know virtual machine itself on the other side for a terminal real cool okay so what we got going on up here um, y'all can see the variables those are pretty clear so we're, let's console log this is going to be str after replace and I'm going to do str console.log str after lowercase uh, once again if you happen to be watching this through and you're still a little newer to coding uh, console log is JavaScript's way of printing to the screen. Sorry for punching the mic. Uh, and that's just how you, this is one of my favorite techniques for troubleshooting or debugging. If you're, if you're just stuck somewhere, just follow, follow the data through the code and you can kind of find where it's going wrong. So if we run this as you, okay, a uh, bad example, go down here, something a little, uh, okay. Yeah. This is the one I actually liked use. You probably saw it in my video where I showed you my code pen. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Oops. I actually took the quotations. But okay. Okay. So after the replace, you can see we have all of this now. All the spaces are gone, the commas are gone, and the period's gone. And then after that, we lowercase everything. And you can already kind of see that it's, you know, becoming a palindrome. Or not becoming, but is a palindrome. So this one, I'm going to comment these out if you want to go back look at them. Rewatch the video a thousand times. I don't care. Pause it. Whatever you want to do. Down here we're going to console log letters. This is the array. And this is just going to show you for each loop through what it's doing here. Um, I don't like the way that's set up. There we go. That's the way. This I like this view a lot better here. So we got A, we got A M, A M A, A M A N, A M A N A. Yeah. So you get the point. It's just building this up um, until it starts getting a little weird down there. I think I could possibly. No, I don't think it's gonna fix it. 
but you can see we're, we're just adding the characters one by one just the single letters to this array that's all we're doing right there because a string itself can be treated as an array we're just taking and breaking that apart to a usable array and down here click console log letters um, this example <laughs> where it is a palindrome it doesn't look any different but if I just add in some Z's here at the end because I won't get rid of you can see they're at the beginning now they're right up here so they're at the start now instead of at the end take those back out next we're going to console log our new string and with the new string um, I'm actually just going to put these these back in for comparison purposes you can see now once again it's all back into one single string of characters but backwards because the z's are at the beginning instead of at the end and then well actually I think that's the last thing I need of the z's because uh, the value is down here we don't need a console log because that's the return value of the terminal so with the z's it's false it is not a palindrome but if we take those and we put them right there we run it's true it is a palindrome so that's my method of making a palindrome checker uh, you can kinda see how I did it I uh, hope you can yeah basically I hope you can visualize how I did that understand the logic behind it even if you don't fully understand the code um, if you don't if you don't fully understand the, the words and the letters and the numbers all that, that that's okay if, if you can follow the different console log steps because it's, it's a lot easier if someone says hey make a palindrome checker it's a lot easier to learn code to do stuff you already know it needs to do then figure out what it needs to do so if you know that a string can be treated as an array and you know you can break that apart and flip it around like I, I can take this I can I could do this in any language just because of these comments right here these are these are the important parts this is your pseudocode this is your algorithm the, the language it you know this isn't language specific I could very easily do this again in Python um, so learning the logic and the process and the steps required to me is more important than learning like the language well, at least for our, the purposes of our example right here um, obviously if you're wanting to do JavaScript programming you do need to learn JavaScript but anyway uh, I hope you all enjoyed that I hope this helped you all out uh, go check out free code camp do it for yourself play around see if you see if you can find another way of doing it uh, I think that'd be really cool if you can find a different way of doing this that's still you know I I hesitate to call my own code efficient but if you can find a way of doing this that's efficient and at least as clean as my code uh, do so and then share it with me I'd be really cool it'd be really cool to see that because uh, I'm always looking for ways to improve my code or uh, yeah anything like that you can even just copy this straight out and see if you can make this code itself better and let me know but thank you all for watching as always like I said I hope this helps and I will see you all in the next one